So we're back into level five restrictions and that means we're back to online teaching. For some teachers, they can move seamlessly from teaching in the classroom to teaching online, but for many others, online teaching brings feelings of worry and anxiety. And that's before we even mention live streaming classes. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a bit about how I set myself up for online teaching and then go through a couple of different options for pre-recording videos and uploading them to your platform or for live streaming your videos on whatever platform you're using. Hopefully this video then will help you and your students over the course of the next few weeks. So there's a lot of different platforms that you can use for online teaching. You might be using Google Classroom, Edmodo, Microsoft Teams, YouTube, OneNote, Whiteboard, iPad and Apple Pencil. There's so many different platforms that you can use and so many different ways you can teach online. No one way is the best way. The best thing you can do is use the tools and the skills that you have at your disposal and just do the best that you can do. So let us know in the comments below what platform you use and what techniques you use for your live teaching so that we can all help each other and get through the next few weeks in as productive a way as possible. So when I set myself up for online teaching, I usually have my laptop and my phone. My phone will be positioned over a piece of paper where I'm doing out questions in maths or in physics. The students then see my hand and the working that I'm doing on the page, similar to what they would see me do on a whiteboard in the classroom. You want to position your phone up above the page so that the students can see the page clearly and that there's no obstruction from view. So you don't want the phone too close to the page so that all they see is your hand. You have it far enough away so that they can see the page and your hand. Another good way to do this is to use a visualizer, which works in a very similar way, but it's plugged straight into your computer. You may also choose to screen share your, your computer if you're using an iPad or a Surface Pro and you can use a program like OneNote or Whiteboard to write directly on your screen and your students then will see what's on your screen. If you're using your phone, laptop or visualizer to record video, there's a few important things to remember. The first thing is proper lighting in the room. So you want the room to be as bright as you can. So have all the lights on and bring in an extra lamp if you need it so that whatever you're working on is nice and bright so the students can see it clearly. If there's a window in the room, try to avoid sitting with the window behind you and the curtains opened, especially on a very bright day, because then it would be difficult for students to see you. They'll see a bright, overexposed window and they'll see you in darkness in the front. So if, if you have the option, just close the curtains like I have done behind me and then there's no problem. In terms of sound quality, you want to eliminate as many background noises as possible. So try not to have the radio on or the TV on in the background. If there's other people working in the house as well, which is very likely during lockdown, then try to work in a different room. But obviously this isn't always possible. And then for your camera, it's important to ensure stability when you're recording. So try not to hold the camera with your hand or try not to hit, the, hit off whatever the camera is resting on or being supported by a tiny little wobble of the camera might not look like much when you're recording but when you look back on the video a tiny wobble turns into a big shake of the screen so there's two main options when you're doing videos for online teaching you can either pre-record your videos and upload them to your platform or you can live stream your videos directly from the platform that you're using so i'll start with pre-recording videos and the main advantage of pre-recording videos is that you can edit out any mistakes that you make or anything that you don't want in the video. So you can record the, the work that you're doing and then edit it down into say a five minute or a 10 minute video that explains clearly what it is you want the students to do. You're not gonna be under any pressure when pre-recording videos to get everything right the first time. In fact, for this video, I'm probably on take number 10 or 11 and I hope it will be the last one. To edit your video then, you can use a uh, free software like Windows Movie Maker, which comes on most laptops, or you can download some more advanced software like DaVinci Resolve, and that gives you a bit more functionality to do a lot of other things with your video. There's no need to pay for video editing software. DaVinci Resolve is a very advanced ed video editing software, and you can download their free version, which has plenty of functionality for a teacher. You can then upload your edited video 
to whatever platform you're using. If it's the likes of Google Classroom or Edmodo, then you'll have a class group made out and you'll upload your video directly to that class group for your students then to see it. Your students can then comment underneath the video, ask you questions, etc. If you have a YouTube channel, you can upload your videos to YouTube. You can then either set them to private and send the link of the video to your students for them to see, or you can set it to public and your students can see it along with anybody else. And that choice is completely up to you. The main disadvantage with pre-recording videos is that you can't take live questions and there's no live interaction between you and your students like what you would have in class. So to overcome that disadvantage then we have the option of live streaming classes and again with a lot of these educational platforms you have the option to live stream there and then. For example with Google Classroom you can generate your meeting link and then you and your students simply click on that link and then it sets up a live video call that you can use to teach your students. Or you might choose to use an external program like Zoom or Microsoft Teams and send the link to your students. Again, whatever you're used to using and whatever you're comfortable using, that's what you should use. The main advantage of live stream in your class is that you have the interaction with your students on a live basis, just like you would in the classroom. So they can ask questions that you can answer straight away, or you can ask the students questions or set them tasks for them to work on during the class. When I'm live streaming my classes, I use two different platforms. The first platform is YouTube, and I use this mainly for my maths classes. I'll set up the live YouTube video on my phone, and then I'll send the link to my students via Google Classroom. The link that I send will be a private link, so only my, my students can watch the video at that time. There's not as much live interaction. I won't see my students, but they can put live comments into the video and I can answer them as we go. The reason I like to use YouTube for this is because once the live stream is finished, I can then edit the live video in the YouTube editor and I can cut out all the bits that I don't want in the video or the bits that aren't as important and compress it down into a smaller video. That, that, that I can then put on my YouTube channel for my students to look at again as they need to. And again, then you can set this video on YouTube to be either private for only your students to see or public for anybody to see. Now, one important thing to realize when you're live streaming a class is that there's no need for you to be live streaming and talking with your face on the camera for a full 40 minute class. If you think about your teaching in the classroom, you usually don't spend 40 minutes, top 40 minutes at the top of the class talking to the students. You might spend 10 or 15 minutes going through some examples and through some work on the board while interacting with your students and then set them some work to do and you then go around to your students. You can do a similar thing while you're live streaming classes in that you spend the first 10 or 15 minutes going through some examples or through some theory, then you set your students some work. At that point, you have several different options you might leave the video call on so that students can ask questions or you can talk to students. If you're using something like Zoom, you can break the students into smaller rooms or maybe have a one-on-one -on -one talk with some students so that the other students aren't distracted at that time. Or you might choose to end the video call right there and say, give your students 15 minutes to do some work and start up the video call again 15 minutes later to see how they got on. Again, it's completely up to you what you choose to do, but just don't feel under pressure to have 40 minutes of live class where you're talking for the full 40 minutes, seven, eight, nine times a day. OK, so hopefully that helped a little bit uh, to prepare you for online teaching and it might have given you some ideas to try out over the next few weeks. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. I'll try and get back to you or other teachers might get back to you as well and share what they do and share what works for them. And then hopefully we'll all be better at live streaming classes and online learning by the end of this lockdown.